Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and this video is actually going to serve as a custom class guide for higher levels here in Modern Warfare Remastered. So I did a video in the past where I showed you guys a bunch of really good classes if you're a low level. I taught you guys what weapons to go for early, what perks are good early, what attachments to try and strive for. This video is going to be similar to that, but it's going to be assuming you're a higher level, assuming you have more weapons available to you, more attachments unlocked, more perks available, and hopefully you guys will sit back, relax, and enjoy it because I definitely have a lot of great classes to share with you here in this video. Let's start things off here with the tried and true, the classic, the M16, which is probably the best Best weapon in the game. This is not going to change too much from the original video I made except this time we're going to be using bandolier because as a higher level we actually have bandolier unlocked. So the reason why we're using a red dot sight, the M16 benefits greatly from a red dot sight because the biggest advantage of the M16 is the fact that you can take people out at a distance. The red dot sight just makes it very easy to snap target to target and see people downrange. I see a lot of people actually opting out for the silencer which I never really could get on board with the silenced M16. The iron sights are bad the silencer reduces your damage at a range, which is your biggest advantage on the M16 is how good you are at a range. I just don't see it being a giant benefit. Use the red dot sight, you'll never look back. And in terms of perks, bandolier, stopping power, and deep impact for a couple of reasons. Like I said, you're very good at a distance, and so having stopping power is going to increase your effectiveness at that distance. Deep impact is very good on a weapon like the M16 that has no idle sway and no recoil because it's very easy to take people out there hiding behind cover. And keep in mind, here in Modern Warfare Remastered, unlike in Black Ops 3 and unlike like in previous Call of Duty games, you can actually shoot through cover and you can shoot through cover incredibly effectively. In fact, people were commenting on my accuracy when I entered the first prestige. They were saying my accuracy looked a little bit low for somebody with stats like mine. The reason why is because I'm constantly pre-firing people with the M16. I'm constantly pre-firing people with the AK-47 or the 74U or even sniper rifles like the M4DA3. I am constantly shooting people through walls and that's going to cause my accuracy to drop down quite a bit. So with this class, with the M16, stopping power and deep impact start shooting through walls because just about everything in this game you can shoot through and you can kill people especially with a weapon as powerful as the m16 in terms of a sidearm i'm gonna have the desert eagle on every single one of these classes there are no attachments of course for the desert eagle and the reason why is i feel as though the desert eagle is the best secondary in the game and in fact when i entered the first prestige i brought the desert eagle with me it's by far my favorite but pick your poison go with wherever you want for me personally i would recommend the desert eagle and for tactical grenades i I always go with stun. I don't like how long it takes to throw a flashbang, and I think smoke grenades are pretty useless. I use stun. I always have, and I always will, and that's what I recommend on just about every single class. The next class we're going to be looking at here is going to be our rushing class, using the AK-74U, which is probably my favorite SMG in the game. It might be my favorite weapon to use in the game as a whole, so stay tuned for another video in the future where we go more in-depth with this weapon, but this gun is by far like my favorite SMG in the game, and this is kind of like my go-to class if I'm going to be rushing around. Now, what's interesting about this weapon is it actually has assault rifle style wall penetration. You are just as effective shooting through a wall with the AK-74U as you are an assault rifle, which is pretty crazy, right? And so that actually opens up a lot of options for your perk 3. Oftentimes, I just use steady aim when I use this class, but you can also opt out for deep impact a lot of the time because, again, this weapon has assault rifle style wall penetration. So if you use deep impact, you are suddenly shredding people through any light cover in the game. It is absolutely fantastic. You could also opt out for something like extreme conditioning if you would like to but for the most part I just use either steady aim or deep impact those are the perks I like to run with the most in terms of a perk one I like to go with bandolier I see a lot of people actually going with frag times three which is very good I cannot deny the power of frag times three but here's the thing about that perk for me Whenever I use it, I feel as though I am so preoccupied with trying to throw my grenades every time I spawn in, make sure all three grenades are thrown somewhere, that I'm not actually focusing on taking flags, I'm not actually focusing on taking map control and actually pushing up, and I find that just running around with bandolier is a better way to play for me. Like, I actually focus on getting to objectives and taking out people with my gun as compared to constantly just throwing grenades left, right, and center. So, if you want to use frag times three, that's perfectly fine. That's all on you. I prefer bandolier. In terms of claymore, like I just I, I, I can't recommend claymores guys they are so weak and if you're trying to rush around like a submachine gun and use something like a claymore you're gonna have to place it in the building then run away and hope you don't die and hope somebody actually trips the thing without seeing it it just isn't very powerful the same can be said for bomb squad claymores are so weak that very rarely will bomb squad actually be useful for you 
Special Grenades times 3 can be very good. If you're using Stun times 3, it's definitely pretty powerful. But the same thing as Frag times 3, I find myself constantly throwing my Stun Grenades as compared to actually running around and playing like I do with Bandolier. And of course, without Bandolier, you're going to run out of ammo pretty quickly, so I don't really run this too often. RPGs are good for taking out helicopters, and C4 is pretty useless in just about every situation. So those are basically all the first perks. If you want to have a good rushing class, I recommend either Frag times 3, Stun times 3, or Bandolier. I oftentimes swapped out for Bandolier. The next class is going to be our P90. Now, this is our anti-sniper class, which I love using. I've been using this class ever since 2007, and it is just as effective today as it was back then. We're going to be using a Silencer and Juggernaut, which you may be thinking to yourself, no stopping power and the range drop off of a silencer, like that sounds pretty freaking weak, right? It really isn't on a weapon like the P90. The P90 has some pretty good damage by default. It has relatively no recoil, so it's very easy to stay on target, and it has a giant magazine size. It actually has the biggest magazine of any SMG in the game, and all these things combined make a very good weapon to take out snipers. So if you're trying to rush around with your AK-74U, but you keep getting one shot by all these snipers, especially if you're playing something like Ground War, opt out for the P90 class. This thing is treating me right for so many years, you will not be disappointed. It is by far one of my favorite classes to use in the game, and I can highly recommend it to all of you guys. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the AK-47, which is going to be my full auto assault rifle class of choice. And the reason why is because the AK-47 is ridiculously powerful. In fact, if you're using stopping power, which you should be on this class, you can actually two-shot people at a pretty good distance with the AK-47. You take that raw power, and then you combine that with deep impact, and suddenly you're shredding people through walls, and you also also have Bandolier because you're going to need a lot of extra reserve ammo because you are going to be taking people out very easily with this weapon. Now we're going to be using no attachments on here for a couple of reasons. One, because I think the iron sights on this weapon are fantastic, but two, there's actually a really odd quirk with the AK-47, and I covered this actually in a previous video, but to reiterate, there is something about the red dot sight that reduces range on the AK. So hypothetically, if you're using no attachments and it requires you four shots to kill your target, at that same distance, it's going to require you five shots if you're using the red dot sight. There is something about this attachment on this weapon that reduces the damage of it, and the same can be said for the silencer. So again, a hypothetical situation, if you're able to two-shot somebody at a medium range with no attachments, it's going to require four shots if you're using a silencer. So definitely use no attachments on the AK. You can use the ACOG scope and not get that weird penalty that you get from the red dot sight or the silencer, but really who uses the ACOG at all in this game really, especially on the AK? Just opt out for no attachments. Now, alternatively, if you don't want to use the AK, but you want to use a different full auto assault rifle, I recommend the M4 carbine with a red dot sight. This is my second favorite full auto rifle in the game. It's very, very powerful. You could opt out for the G36C or the MP44, but in reality, the G36C is basically just a weaker M4, in my opinion, with less idle sway and easier to manage recoil, whereas the MP44 is also just a weaker version of the AK-47. Like, in my mind, and maybe this isn't backed up by stats, but in my mind, the G36C is just a worse version of the M4, and I know for a fact that the MP44 is basically just a weaker version of the AK-47. So if you're looking for a good full auto assault rifle, look no further than the AK-47 or the M4 carbine with a red dot sight. The next class is going to be our sniper class. Now we have RPGs on here for a couple of reasons. The biggest one is you don't really need bandolier on a sniper. Very rarely are you going to live long enough with a sniper rifle that you're going to run completely out of ammo. Now it has happened. It happens to me. It's going to happen to you. It's going to happen on occasion, but it doesn't happen very often, so oftentimes you can switch this out for something else. The reason why I went with RPGs is because I don't really need frag times 3, Claymore a little bit too weak, and with the RPG, I can help out taking out helicopters if they actually get them. So with the RPG, if you hit a helicopter once and then shoot the helicopter one time with your m 48 3 that is enough damage to take out a helicopter, something to bear in mind. We're going to be using stopping power because the M40A3 requires stopping power, guys. If you're not using stopping power on your M40, you cannot one-shot people unless you hit them in the head or in the neck. Something to bear in mind, always use stopping power on your M40A3. And we're going to be using deep impact because there's currently a bug in Modern Warfare Remastered where you really can't get a collateral in this game unless you're using deep impact. Like, you are required to use deep impact if you want to get a collateral or a triple or anything like that. 
Now, you could go and use ACOG Sight, which for some reason increases the damage of the M40, which makes it so you can get a one-shot kill anywhere in the body, assuming they're not using Juggernaut, but that's personal preference. If you want to use ACOG, go for it. I prefer Reg Scope. Either or is good. And if you want to swap out to another sniper like the R700 or the 50 cal, feel free to do that as well. But for personal preference, for me personally, I enjoy the M40 A3. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at a shotgun class. The shotgun of choice for me in this game is going to be the W1200. You have a choice between this, which is pump action, and the 1014, which is going to be semi-automatic. I prefer the W1200. It's actually very powerful in this game. It has definitely benefited a lot from the improved hit detection that we have here in Modern Warfare Remastered. Now, the class itself is going to consist of Stun Times 3, Juggernaut, and Steady Aim. Steady Aim is always a good perk on a shotgun class because you're going to be hip firing quite a bit. Juggernaut is there because we want to have extra health. You really don't get a big benefit from stopping power. If you are close enough to somebody that you're going to be able to one shot kill them with stopping power, chances are you're already going to be able to do enough damage with the weapon by default to get a one shot kill at that range anyway. So, you definitely want to opt out for something a little bit different. Stopping power is pretty much useless on these shotguns here in this game. Double tap is very good for shotguns, especially a pump action because it's going to allow you to cycle through your shells a lot faster. Slide of hand is very good, obviously, for the faster reloads. UAV jammer is very good because it's going to keep you off the UAV, which is constantly up in this game. I personally like to go for Juggernaut, though, because I like to be able to basically make it a more even playing field. If they see me while I'm at a distance, I can try to close that distance between me and them while I'm eating their bullets and hopefully get a kill with my shotgun up close. I'm using stun times three here because I'm stunning people constantly. If you're using a shotgun in a game like Modern Warfare Remastered, which has a lot of big maps, you're going to need every advantage you can get. So keep these stuns in your pocket, use them to stun somebody, then run up and shotgun them it is one of the most fun ways to play the game, in my opinion. And I've definitely been enjoying it. The next class we're going to be looking at here in this video is actually going to be more of a search and destroy class. So this is actually like my preferred way to play SD. There's something about this class that I just love. The MP5 with a red dot sight and stopping power. And of course, Dead Silence. If you're playing Search, you need Dead Silence. I realize the footsteps in Modern Warfare Remastered are a lot quieter than they were back in Call of Duty 4, but that is a known issue and Raven Software is working on it. And in fact, right now, currently, people can still hear your footsteps if their headset is up loud enough. So you're going to need to have Dead Silence in a game mode like Search and Destroy. Stopping power for obvious reasons. It's going to make it so your MP5 is a lot more powerful. And then, of course, we're also going to have Stun Times 3, which is just very beneficial in a game mode like Search and Destroy. You could opt out for Frag Times 3 or maybe something along the lines of bomb squad but for the most part either stun times three or frag times three are going to be your choices in that game mode like search and destroy if you don't like the mp5 with the red dot sight silencer is fine but i just prefer red dot sight i don't like the damage drop off of the silencer personally and if you're looking for a different weapon for search and destroy i recommend something along the lines of the ak-74u no attachments the ak-47 no attachments or the m16 with a red dot sight the next class is actually going to be our big ammo our big light machine gun class the rpd so if all the lmgs in the game the rpd is by far the best in my opinion it doesn't really have a ton of recoil it hits like an absolute truck and it sounds really really badass so you want to actually put a foregrip on here it's going to take away all the recoil and it's going to make it very easy to manage keep in mind in modern warfare mastered a foregrip as well as a grenade launcher they get rid of your first perk which is something to bear in mind but it's going to be okay you have more than enough ammo on the rpd than not need bandolier on it you're also going to want to be using stopping power along with deep impact because these are by far the best two perks we using on a weapon like the RPD, which will absolutely shred anybody through any cover in the entire game. The next and final class that we're going to be covering here in this video is actually going to be the highly underrated G3 assault rifle with a red dot sight. So I see a lot of people using silencer. That's fine. I mean, the iron sights on this gun are great, but keep in mind, there's a bug in this game where if you actually try to knife somebody with a silenced G3, it just isn't going to work. Something to bear in mind. Check out my Modern Warfare Remastered Quirks video if you guys want to see more on that, but it just simply will not work. I like to use the red dot sight because when I'm using the G3, I am sitting back. It's a semi-automatic rifle. It can two to three shot kill people at just about any range in the game. It's very powerful, right? And so I sit back, I use my red dot sight, and I pick people off at a distance. I have my standard setup of bandolier and stopping power. Deep impact because this weapon, like I said, can two or three shot kill people at very good ranges, and it's very powerful at killing people through walls as well. 
well. So Deep Impact is by far the way to go. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I hope you guys all found it helpful and informative. Those are the best classes in the game, in my opinion, regardless of level. If you're looking for some good classes and some good setups, those are the ones to go with. Now, as a little bit of a brownie extra one here, this is actually kind of like my bonus class, I suppose. If you're playing on Shipment, which I know a lot of you guys are grinding Shipment, this is my preferred class setup right here. We have the AK-74U. We have no attachments, of course. And just as a reminder, there are a couple of bugs with the AK-74U. If you use a red dot sight or if you use a silencer, your hip fire will then become that of an assault rifle. So use no attachments on your AK-74U. I have Martyrdom on there. And I'm not proud of it, but I have Martyrdom on there because it's very good on Shipment. I have Bandolier because, believe it or not, I pre-fire people through walls all the time on that map and I actually run out of ammo. And, of course, I have Stopping Power for the extra damage to my weapon. And, yes, people, I think it's odd that I run Bandolier on Shipment. I do because I'm always shooting through walls. Keep in mind, AK-74U has Assault Rifle-style wall penetration, which means you can shoot through all those crates very, very easily, which means I'm always pre-firing people, I'm always running out of ammo, and that is my preferred setup when I'm playing on Shipment. If I'm using an Assault Rifle, I opt out for the AK-47, and this is the class that I use on Shipment if I want to use an Assault Rifle. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is going to conclude this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed it. I hope you guys all found it helpful and informative. Let me know down there in the comment section below where some of your favorite classes to use here in Modern Warfare Remastered. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.